Hello! In this exercise, we're going to create a stepped surface, focusing on NURB surface parameterization and ISO curves. And we're also going to touch upon the relevant data tree management tools. If you have missed the introductory tutorial and you feel you might need to catch up, please do so before continuing. Let's begin by creating a rectangular planar surface. I'm snapping the corner points to the grid here, but you could also simply create a surface plane. I'm also drawing the dimensions for explanatory purposes. You don't have to. Just make sure you are aware of the surface size and the project scale. Then rebuild the surface to add control points. Turn on the control point preview and move a few of the points along the z-axis only. I'm going to pause here and emphasize that in this exercise the surface plane orientation must match Rhino World XY plane. If you'd like, you can change the grid size. I'm going to make it smaller. And let's go to Grasshopper now. Let's reference the surface, then go under Curve, Spline and take isocurve. Input the surface and let's create the UV coordinates. I'm using the range and construct point components here. And since I'm using a normalized domain, I also need to reparameterize the surface. So because my UV input is an array of points rather than a grid, in the U direction, I get a grafted list of overlapping isocurves. And in the V direction, I get a grafted list of isocurves distributed along the surface. I want to swap the UV divisions and have the curves distributed along the U. The easiest way to do it here is by changing the UV point array. And let's flatten the list to keep it simple. So I have the curves extracted from a surface, but in essence, these could be curves created in any other way. And you could modify, rebuild or simplify these curves if you are experiencing any relevant issues. I'm going to delete this part for now. So we have an array of curves. Let's go under Surface, Freeform, choose Extrude and input the curves. You can construct a custom vector to define the direction, but since my surface is parallel to the xy plane, I can use the default plane vectors, in this instance the x vector. And since I know the surface dimensions, I can set the amplitude manually. Let's begin like that. So one way to create steps from here could be by extruding the surfaces into these bent slabs of closed breps. But in this exercise, I am interested in a slightly different approach. So instead, let's move the initial curves to match the extrusion. I'm using two different colors for explanation here. So with the extrusion component, we create surfaces from the dark blue curves moving towards the light blue ones. Now I want to start with the light blue curves and create surfaces between these two sets. For that, I need to change their list structure. Specifically, I need to either shift the list or call some indices. So let's remove the first dark blue curve from the list, defining the index as 0. Note that whether it is the first or the last item on a list depends from which boundary curve the division starts. Let's do the same with the light blue list, this time removing the last item, which index is minus 1. Ok, now we can pair these curves and create lofted surfaces between the pairs. I'm going to use the merge tool to join the two lists. And at the moment, the lists are merged one after another. To create pairs, we need to graph the inputs so that the merge tool would treat each item as a separate list. Looks correct? We can input the curves to the loft component now. And let's test how it works when modifying the surface geometry in Rhino. 
all works well. So this is the basic setup for this algorithm. Let's push it a bit further, starting with a question for you guys. How to remove the extrusion exceeding the boundaries of the initial surface? Please pause the video and think through the steps before continuing. So we could simply remove the last curve from the list of curves to extrude. And that's it. You can also join the surfaces to a single poly surface, just don't forget to flatten the BREP join input. So at the moment we are defining the number of steps and the step depth manually. Let's see how we could create a more adaptive step size. Since my surface is rectangular and the distortion is only along the Z axis, I can take the boundary curve in V orientation, evaluate its length and divide it by the number of steps to find the depth. Note that in this instance, if both V boundary curves are modified, you could project the curve back onto the XY plane before evaluation. And you could also use the projected curve to construct custom vector for the extrusion. So this definition would work to some extent even if the surface is skewed in other directions. And this might suffice. However, you might have a situation where the isocurve distribution is too distorted and too uneven to get desirable results. Let's see what we could do in a situation like this. I'm going to delete the part I need to change, then go under Curve Analysis and grab the Curve Proximity tool. Input the initial U isocurves as A and the shifted list as B inputs. Don't forget to disable the value of wrapping here. Curve Proximity's D output returns the smallest distance between two curves. Let's use these distances for the step depth. Notice there are some overlapping still. That's because in our case it's better to use the distances between the projected planar curves. Looks better now, but we have an error with the extrude component. And that's because the last vector here is zero. For now, I'm simply gonna remove that last vector from the list. Let's check the loft component now. Although there's no warning, the output is not valid. There are no surfaces. That's because the merge tool returns unpaired curves. It happens if the supplied data paths do not match. Here, for instance, I have the first list with the two hierarchical levels and the second one with three levels. The ways to solve this mismatch depend on the specific situation. In this instance, we could flatten the relevant outputs to make path structures match. Or we could simplify the merge inputs, removing the hierarchical path levels altogether. OK, let's move on. And let's say we'd like to adjust the distribution of these isocurves. So first, we could apply some surface modifications in Rhino, say rebuilding the surface or adding the control points. This, of course, would slightly change the geometry. And here we have another question time. How could we adjust the isocurve distribution in Grasshopper? Please pause the video and think through the steps before continuing. So we can do it by changing the UV input values. And I'm going to change these values by remapping them with the graph mapper. You can choose different graph presets just make sure that the graph's domain matches the surfaces. Next, I'd like to assign a custom color preview for each step. To do that, I need to join each pair of surfaces into a separate step. So instead of having one polysurface, I should have 18 polysurfaces. I'm going to use the Merge tool again to put pairs in separate lists. And then use join 
this time leaving the input data structure as is and flattening the output. So first, let's try using the gradient tool. I'm going to take list length as an upper limit value, use the item index component to get the indices, and leave the lower limit at zero, and then add the custom preview tool here. Looks correct. Let's say we'd like to generate and assign a unique color for each step. For this purpose, I'm going to use the color wheel. So the color wheel creates a palette with a defined number of related colors. We can adjust the shades, saturation, and luminosity with interactive handles. And by right-clicking, you can also access the menu with different color range combinations for the palette. Let's now briefly talk about some preview issues you might experience when working with curved NURB surfaces. Currently, I have the render preview mode active in Rhino viewport, with the Grasshopper custom preview tool enabled for the render view. So note that you can always disable it. I'm going to enable it again and now try changing the slider. So if you are seeing the breaking of the geometry similar to what I have in my viewport, know that this is only a preview issue. And if you were to bake the geometry, you would get smooth baked surfaces in Rhino. To update the preview, you can force recomputing of the grasshopper file. However, if this gets annoying and you still prefer keeping the custom preview enabled for the render view, you could simply rebuild the initial curves. This would help sample curve geometry for a better preview. Similarly, in some instances, you could also rebuild the curves using the loft options. So this was strictly Grasshopper's custom preview issue. But when we have surfaces that are drastically skewed and twisty, we might start seeing different breaks in the smoothness. In such cases, you could increase the number of control points, i.e. the resolution of curves, but note that an extremely large number of points makes the definition heavier. We could also change the preview mesh quality. I'm going to apply custom quality, and only change the minimum and maximum edge lengths. Don't go too low with this one. The settings should match the project scale. And if the grasshopper render preview still causes issues, to update the preview, force the recomputing when another view mode is active in Rhino. So this time, if we bake the surfaces, we most likely have a similar preview issue in Rhino. To change it, select the surface, Go to Objects Properties and assign Custom Render Meshing Settings. You could also utilize the Flat Shade mode to see the meshing better when experimenting with the settings. This could help set adequate meshing parameters, avoiding unnecessarily fine resolution. We are almost done, but before we part, let's reduce the redundancy in this definition. So having both of these call index components is unnecessary. We can reduce it to one by using it in a different place. In essence, we could also eliminate another call index component. However, note in this instance, I need to reverse surface V direction to start the U division from the opposite boundary. Okay, it works again. But since I have removed another cool index component, I am now merging two sets that have different numbers of curves. Thus, the last curve doesn't have a pair and no loft surface is created. Whether this could cause any problems depends on your plans moving forward with this definition. In a different case, when dealing with null items, I would suggest cleaning the data tree, but in this instance, I would rather leave the call index component and have some additional flexibility. So we can use subdivision surfaces here as well. Don't forget that you can easily fix stepping direction by swapping call first with call last. And if it's necessary to reverse surfaces UV in Grasshopper, you can try add-on tools 
like the one from the lunchbox I'm using here, or you could also script your own custom object. Finally, notice that my input geometry is such that the output doesn't return any invalid surfaces or surfaces that are created between duplicate lines. Make sure to check this and filter such surfaces out if necessary. Ok, so this is it for this tutorial. I hope this was as much fun as useful for you. Thanks for joining and keep learning!